Hello Year 8. Today we're starting a new topic called the Earth. You can find information on this topic in the online book. If you have a look at Caboodle pages 104 to 105, that might help you with some of the tasks in today's lesson. So just having a look at the three images on the page here, which one do you think is most like our Earth and why? Have a little think about that for a moment and you can pause the slide. So in today's lesson, we need to be able to describe the Earth and its atmosphere, so the structure of those two things. Uh, we'll compare the layers of the Earth and describe the composition of the atmosphere. You can see there are some keywords on the top right hand side there. Some of them um, you will have heard of before, I'm sure. A couple of them you may not have. OK, so I've got an image here of a open bag of crisps. And everything in that bag of crisps, that entire bag of crisps, comes from the earth. I'm just wondering if you can have a think why that might be or how that might be. Crisps are made from potatoes, so obviously they come from under the ground where they grow. And the way they grow is through photosynthesis and respiration. And Everything that's needed for those processes comes from carbon dioxide in the air and also the nutrients in the ground and water that comes up through the ground as well into the plants. The salt that we flavour them with comes from the sea or from specialist salt farms where the salt is produced. The packaging comes out of rocks because it's made of a um, metal and the crisps themselves are stored under nitrogen gas to protect them from the air because otherwise they would go off pretty quickly. So the nitrogen acts as a preservative and that comes from our atmosphere, so the gases that are around us. What I want you to do next is watch the YouTube video that I have embedded in this slide. So you can either launch it from here if you're in PowerPoint or you can type it in if you're watching the mp4 version it's about five minutes long we're going to imagine a journey from the edge of the surface of the earth into its center now the first thing you would do if you wanted to get to the center of the earth was to travel through the crust okay so the crust is approximately 40 kilometers of solid rock the depth of that rock is going to vary over different parts of the Earth's structure. We know that in some places the crust is thinner, and those sorts of places would be where we have um, tectonic plate boundaries, and um, sometimes where we have volcanic activity, the crust might be thinner. So the crust is a solid rock. The second part of your journey would be through the mantle shown here in red. So this is very thick layer. It's about 3,000 kilometers thick. And again, that's made mostly of solid rock. It has got, however, the ability to flow in some areas where warm rock rises and cooler rock sinks. And there's the mantle. Okay, the next 2,000 kilometers is a very hot liquid rock um, in the um, yellow in our diagram here and that's the outer core so if it's a liquid it can be moving all of the time it also contains some nickel an element you could find on the periodic table if you have a look okay, and then finally we have got the inner core which is approximately 1000 kilometers of solid iron nickel alloy so um, pretty much the same as the outer core but in this case solid so now we're right in the center of the earth so the crust the mantle liquid iron outer core solid iron inner core now at this we can have a look at the periodic table and find all of the elements that are listed here because they all appear in the Earth's crust. Okay, they're not compounds at this point, they're just elements 
but they will be bound into con compounds when they're part of, for instance, the rocks that make up the Earth's surface. So um, the main thing you need to remember here is that oxygen actually is a major component of the Earth's crust. 46% of the Earth's crust is gas, which is a bit surprising, isn't it? Silicon is another major component that takes up 28%. And then we have some other elements, aluminium, iron, calcium, sodium, magnesium, potassium, hydrogen and titanium, all with smaller proportions of the Earth's crust. And it's interesting to note that all except one of those are metals. So, um, you know, if you look at the periodic table, the majority of the things on there, the elements on there, are actually metals. So everything to the left-hand side of that staircase line that we drew on in um, an earlier term. It's only to the right-hand side that we have the uh, gases and any liquids, for instance. What I want you to do now, please, is print off the sheet that I have attached to show my homework on the structure of the Earth. And I'd like you to have a good go at colouring and labelling and also adding some of the um, annotations that are on this slide, please. Your sheet will look exactly like this. And what I suggest you do is that within the circle of the Earth structure, you make the uh, layers of the Earth like we saw in the previous slides and colour them in accordingly um, in your key, um, which is shown on here. And then we've got a few words a few labels rather in the boxes that I would like you to have a think about and also add those to your image. There's an extension there that um, you could attempt also. So now we're going to think about what actually surrounds the earth. So the gases that are on the outside of the earth, they're called the atmosphere. I'm sure you have heard of the atmosphere. Uh, you may not, however, have heard of the troposphere. So that's the part of the atmosphere which is closest to the Earth's surface. So that obviously contains the gases that we breathe in uh, every day of our lives. Um, and that layer, that troposphere layer, is about 10 kilometres thick. OK, so what's that? About six or seven miles thick, I suppose. That atmosphere is made of primarily nitrogen. So 78% of it is nitrogen. Lots of students think that the air that we breathe is entirely oxygen. It isn't. It's about 21% oxygen. And in fact, breathing in 100% um, oxygen over a long period of time can be damaging to the body. We also have some other gases in there, notably um, argon, which is just 1%, and carbon dioxide, which is 0.04%. Carbon dioxide, of course, is really important because that's needed for the plants to photosynthesize. If plants didn't photosynthesize, there would be nothing for the herbivore animals, so animals that only eat plants, to eat. And if there were no herbivore animals, there'd be no carnivore animals to eat those um, herbivore animals because they would have no food themselves. So they're really important in the food chain. And carbon dioxide obviously is important for us. We breathe out some carbon dioxide, but it's a much lower percentage than a lot of people think it is. It's only um, about 0.4%. So it does increase by about tenfold when you breathe the air out of your lungs. OK, so you can have a go at drawing a pie chart for this by pausing the slides and just using your compass and dividing up your 360 degrees into the percentages shown above. If you do that, you'll notice that you have a little portion back because 78 plus 21 plus 1 plus 0.04 don't add up exactly to 100%, and that's because there are a few other gases in the air that are in very small, <coughs> excuse me, in very small percentages. Okay, so do you think you were right with your image that you chose for the structure of the Earth? Was it this one? OK, maybe there are some positives to this one. OK, we have an outer edge, which could be the crust. OK, we could talk about this being the core, the inner core, maybe the mantle up here. It's not a bad diagram. It doesn't show or you could imagine that actually that this was the atmosphere and that this was the earth in the centre. OK, what about the scotch egg? We've got a core, maybe 
a mantle, uh, perhaps a crust, although the crust would be very thick on this one, wouldn't it? And the mantle probably a little thin. You could think for the apple that the skin perhaps was the crust. Could have a very thick mantle and a core at the centre. Okay, none of the shapes are quite right, are they? The Earth is almost a sphere, but in fact it's a little bit fatter around the equator. So the line running around the edge, of, or the, hmm, hasn't got an edge, has it? Around this part of the Earth is the equator, and that's a little bit fatter. So a little bit like if you took a football and you squashed the top and the bottom together, that would be more like the shape of the Earth. So you could use any of these, really. Um, there isn't really a wrong answer. So there's a final optional task you can do for me if you want to, and that's to design and make a labelled model of the Earth structure. This is something we might have done in the classroom. Um, you can probably Google different models if you want some ideas for how to do that, and you can submit that photo to me by email if you want to. Okay, but This is an optional task. The main thing I want to see from you is the worksheet with the labelled structure of the Earth and those annotations added to it. Alright, have a good week here, eight.